right now. It's LSU versus Northwestern's Wildcats out of the Big Ten. With former LSU standout Tierra Gibson, I'm Lynn Rollins. Tierra, this matchup is very appropriate for both Northwestern and LSU as they try to assess just where they are on the opening weekend of volleyball season. Last year, both these teams had subpar seasons. This is an excellent measuring stick opportunity for both the Wildcats and the Tigers. Now, LSU is going to face three opponents in this tournament, and of those three, Northwestern is the most similar to teams that LSU is going to face later this season in SEC play. The Wildcats will again be led by senior Simone Abbott. She's been a fixture in the lineup since she's a freshman. She is one of the best offensive players in the Big Ten. Abbott is a tremendous athlete. Her coaches told us that she, in a vertical leap test, she touched 10 feet 5 inches. That's going to put her attacking the ball high above the block. Abbott is a four-year starter for the Wildcats, and last season she led the team in kills. LSU needs some help offensively this year. They want to be more efficient. They want to be more consistent. They've got junior Olivia Beyer and freshman Taylor Bannister with two pieces of that equation. I think Olivia Beyer is the most consistent offensive weapon these Tigers have. She had a great end to her 2016 season. She had an excellent fall camp. But a lot of eyes are going to be drawn to the 6'5 freshman Taylor Bannister. She has very exciting measurables and has had a lot of national attention coming out of high school. LSU and Northwestern have played five times in their volleyball histories. The Wildcats have won four. We'll see what happens this afternoon from Tampa, Florida. As we come back with LSU Northwestern Volleyball, it's in your living rooms next on CST. Then errors yesterday in that first match. Right, it's definitely important to try to have a one-to-one -one ratio. For every error, you better be getting at least an ace to make up for it. Abbott hit. Those are tough plays for the middles. Very hard to come down from a block and look straight up in the air. Teammates, you see teammates yelling up, up, up. Just a really difficult play for a middle. Gabriel. When you're in a rhythm, the worst thing that you can do is, is serve into the net or out of bounds. That just instantly kills your team's momentum, and it doesn't even give you an opportunity to make a play. So it's always best to be on the safer side, keep the ball in play, and give your team an opportunity. It's the Big Ten, without question, the best volleyball league in the nation. Absolutely. Time and time again, you see Nebraska, Wisconsin, and even Minnesota has tremendously been improving. You always look to the Big Ten to see usually kind of the top 15 teams. Most of them come from the Big Ten. You could look at Northwestern's record and, and see three wins, but you do have to give them credit for playing in the Big Ten. That's the premier volleyball conference in the United States. That is going to be the growing pain for her. She is so long, so tall. She's got a great reach, but she's really got to make sure she gets the right hand on the ball every time and snaps her wrist. When she doesn't, things like that happen. The ball goes long. We talk a lot about Abbott getting up and elevating, but that's just Gina Tillis doing Gina Tillis. She's going to hit the hole if you give it to her, and if your hands are off of the net, she's going to use them all day long. Stokes is there on the block, but unfortunately her hands just weren't turned in the right direction. Back into the court, she had her right hand facing the exterior of the court, and the ball just went out of bounds. We get Jackie Armour's there on the block. You see that left hand goes straight up, doesn't really penetrate the plane above the, above the net. Had she pressed over, I think she would have gotten hazing on that. One foot in front of the setter leaves one point of contact. The ball has to be set perfectly. The setter's pushed way outside the antenna, and she still delivers a great ball. That's an incredible play. LSU is siding out at 54%. That means that after a serve, they're getting the ball back 54% of the time. Coach Flory always told us 60% is where we need to be. Just by comparison, Northwestern is siding out at 73%. This lineup is really great for LSU because they have basically two utility players in armor and banister. Either one can go on the right side. Either one can go on the middle. That makes for a lot of confusion for blockers for Northwestern. Yep. Last night, LSU handled Arkansas Pine Bluff in a 3-0 sweep. But earlier today, LSU had to battle back against Northwestern from the brink of defeat multiple times, down two sets, but they ended up defeating the Wildcats in a five-set thriller. They, LSU had five players with at least seven kills. Very productive. One of the leading kill producers 
receivers for LSU was Tony Rodriguez. She matched the second best kill total that she's ever had at LSU. It was one of her best performances. Rodriguez contributed 17 kills, but what she brought to the Tigers was more than that. She brought energy, she brought emotion, and her teammates absolutely fed off of her. Now this South Florida team is led by Clara Payne, both offensively and defensively. She's a big middle blocker, and she's a good player. Payne was last year's leading blocker in all categories, and she's the returning kill percentage leader as well. So today, as we conclude this tournament, it's the University of South Florida's Bulls digging in. I've only played with one international player, and that was Katarina Rajevic out of Serbia, my first year here at LSU. And she played right side and outside, which is, you know, that's not uncommon. But she also was on the Serbian beach national team. She played in the competition to try to go to the Olympics for Serbia. And um, so I, I wouldn't say, you know, her in particular was a really good all-around player, but she was playing indoor and beach, playing right side and outside. So I, I could definitely see where Coach Draper is coming from by saying, you know, they're not just, I'm a middle hitter and that's all I'm going to do. LSU, in comparison, has three players hitting over 330 with Jackie Armour hitting 444, which is outstanding for a middle blocker. Kelly. If they stay on this track, continue recruiting players like Bannister, Chinchilli, I mean, look at the immediate impact these freshmen have. Fran Flory can continue to get talent like this, the sky's the limit.